Hi and welcome back. In this video I wanted to talk about part engravings in FreeCAD. So in this photo I have here you can see that this is a part with a particular part engraving. I suspect that this part is some type of disc break because it's got this polished outside and then the engraving is strategically placed not in the polished region there. But uh, we'll ignore that for now. That's not super relevant. So what is a part engraving? So part engraving is like a small indentation you put into a part with letters or numbers that you can identify a part later. Sometimes these are just for internal use if you're at a company, and sometimes these will be codes that you can use to generate a specific part. You know, so let's say I wanted like a 1 8 inch pipe, that it would be, a, I don't know, like a number one code, and then a, a 2 8 inch pipe or a quarter inch pipe would be a number two code, and that would identify exactly what this part is. So I'm going to switch over to FreeCAD here. We can get ourselves a part. So I'm going to jump over to the part design workbench. I'm going to start with a body and a sketch. And I'll just make a sketch on one of these planes. And this is just that we can have a part to put our engraving on. I'm going to give this a two inch tall box and we'll make it like four inches wide. That sounds nice. I'm going to constrain that to the origin. We'll call that good. So we'll close that. I will pad this. Let's pad it one inch. We have a nice block. And now I'm going to jump over to draft, which is going to have our part stuff in it. It's interesting. I guess draft has decided that it wanted to be at a very uh, strange angle. But uh, we can turn off this grid by just clicking this grid button here, the toggle draft grid button. Draft buttons are hiding from me here. I'm going to use not the text, there's a different one, shape from text. So I'll grab the shape from text. In this text field here, we have a few options. So we've got some positioning options and then string which is going to be the actual text that shows up, the height and a font file. So for this, I'm going to choose a font. On my system, my fonts are located under user share fonts. I'm going to use the TTF folder. And for this, I'm going to choose Fira Mono Bold .ttf. I'll click OK. You can see that this is placed, uh, I guess, pretty randomly, but it's OK. Under the font here, I'm going to go to map mode. We will do selecting, and I will select this particular face. And then from here, you know, you should be able to, to move it around with these buttons and, and position it where you want it. I'll just click OK for now. So then under shape string here, we can come down. Let's change the height of our font to something more reasonable. Let's do like 0.2 inches and then we can change this string to the actual font I guess the actual part number for this I'll use 000001 here we have our font I'm gonna actually just move this to the right a little bit I believe I can come over here to map mode and I'll scroll down here and we'll just move it to the right a little bit sure right there is looking good and you'll notice this font's got kind of a, uh, an interesting little circle in the middle. I'm interested to see if this functions properly. I'm going to come back over here to my body and I'll switch back over to part design. Of course, I'll need to activate my body. And we're going to shape binder this with the green shape binder and I'll hide the original string. And then I'm going to pocket this let's see it does appear to do the correct thing let's choose a, a more reasonable pocket depth like 0 0.02 inches even that might be a little bit deep but that that's looking pretty good so this uh this kind of center section doesn't appear to be functioning super correctly it appears that we've got a, a flipped normal or something so i'm actually going to just change the font here Fire code medium looks better. 
that does look better. It's not got that kind of like infinitely thin ring in the middle. This is also a little bit smaller, I think. So maybe that will uh, affect your choice of font. But anyways, so that's the, the basic gist of this, but we can do something more. For instance, what if we had some information about a font and we wanted to compile it? So a good place to store that would be in a spreadsheet. So I'm going to make a new spreadsheet and I will rename this to be part info. I'm going to have three columns here. I'll be part number on the first one. The second one will be config number. So typically you'll have like a, a part family and then like a, a specific part, right? So if you've got like, I don't know, one length or one diameter of pipe, the, the diameter of pipe will be one part number and then your various lengths could be a config, right? Because I mean, they're basically the same pipe. You're going to order the same pipe and then you're going to chop it down, right? So there's not really any reason to just make a whole bunch of part numbers for a one inch pipe and a two inch pipe and a three inch pipe, right? And then we'll get ourselves a revision number or I guess a revision letter. And for this, I'll just choose some, uh, some interesting part numbers. So we'll do 00001 for our part number. And I will alias this to part number. And for our config number, I will do 001. And I'll alias that to config number. And for revision, we'll do revision A. Oops. We'll do revision A, and I'll alias that to revision. Alrighty, and then switching back over here to our part, I'm going to come down here over to string, and we can actually make this string a formula. So for instance, we could do part info dot, and then part number that should update here, right? So we've got a one, and if I changed it to a two, and we went back, we'd see that it is now a two, right? I'm gonna change that back to a zero, 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 one. But we can, do, uh, we can do some more interesting stuff. So I'm gonna pull up my browser here, go to FreeCAD Expressions. I know that they have a, uh, an interesting web page that's got a variety of information on how to do free cat expressions and some of this is string manipulation which is exactly what we're looking for and in particular we're looking for this string formatting section and this bit right here see if i can zoom this in this bit right here is exactly what we're looking for so what this is, it's basically a print app where you have your, your string that gets injected into, and then you've got percent %s, which is like injecting a string. So this would grab the cube length, and then box.length would get stuffed into this first percent %s, and then box.width would get stuck into this second percent %s. We're going to do something quite similar, so I'll just move this off to the side here. Under my string here, I'm going to do a double less than, and then I'll do a, uh, we'll just do a percent s, percent s dash percent s percent s, and then we need a, another percent sign, and then tuple, right, because uh, this is the tuple here, right, so this is just like grouping these three things together, these two things together. And then, uh, let's see, I actually probably can, can shrink this down and uh, get it to fit on the screen here. Now we can both see it. Okay, so then we've got tuple, and we want part info dot part number, and then a semicolon, and part info dot config number, and the semicolon, and then we want part info dot revision. Okay, 
and I'll move this off to the side here and you can see that now we've got our part number part uh, revision number and then uh, config number all in here but this is a little bit strange because uh, you know our part number is missing what like four zeros or something that we're stuck on the end of this thing so we we definitely want the zeros there because you know who knows if this is part one or if this is part ten you know somebody somebody might write this down somewhere as a one and then you know we don't know if this is zero one maybe this is a, a ten maybe it's 101 who knows you know and, and same thing for the the config number so I believe you could fix this in the spreadsheet but I'm actually going to fix this kind of further down the line in our shape string and we can just do this using some standard I guess printf syntax so I'm gonna switch these to be a D doesn't seem to change anything immediately but a D basically just means that we're going to be printing an integer and then I'm going to tell it that we want to print the first five decimals of the first number and the first three decimals of the second number so you'll notice here that we've got the first zero set and the second zero set so this way we're definitely printing the whole thing after it rebuilds now we have the proper numbers here if we come back for instance and we modify our part number here you'll see that it does in fact fully update so one two three four five is our part number and we'll do config like seven eight nine with revision I don't know we'll call it like BB um, although you got to be pretty that's pretty uh, that's a lot of revisions to get to BB 90 revisions or so. so now if we come back to our part engrave you'll see that our engrave note now has the proper part number config number and revision number that's how you can add a revision to a part for instance if you wanted to make this simpler you could do a, a template here and then you could just binder it and, and pocket it once you get there although I would I would suggest only doing this pocketing thing if you're 3d printing this part and if you're not 3d printing this part and you're actually having somebody machine it or, or laser engrave it or something well maybe if you're laser engraving it you can put this in your actual part file but if you're machining it you probably just call out you know engrave this particular thing at this particular location because this this is going to be uh, pretty confusing to a machinist um, because they're going to be like well you know should this be done with like an end mill that's going to be like a really small end mill it'll take me forever and like you know there's no fillets on these corners no radiuses on these corners I'll have to get like a like a special end mill is it okay if I mill it with like a V groove profile you know and like we don't really care about any of that stuff I hope you found this interesting and have a nice day.